Okay, project one. Let's get into how to insert your landscape photo, how to draw on top of your landscape, and just the whole process of our first project. Um, we already set up our new file. So if you don't know how to do that, you're going to go back to your home page and click new file. And we already set up our image. So if you didn't have your landscape image ready, then go back to Google Photos, find your or Google Images, find your landscape and put it on your desktop. So I've already done that. I do need to minimize this a little bit so that I can see my desktop because I'm just going to click and drag it in. I know a lot of you guys like to work full screen, but just for this first step, we got to minimize it a tiny bit. So I can see my desktop. I can see my landscape photo. I'm going to drag it in and drop it right in the middle there. It might take a second to load and then it'll pop up. It goes usually as big as it can and everyone's image is going to be a different size. So I'll show you later how to crop this white background. Once it pops up, it has this big blue X through it and it has all of our little squares, which are called anchor points that allow you to move the photo. So if you can't move the photo and you don't see those little squares, you're going to go up to the move tool. This is your basic um, move and grab tool that you need for most objects and photos. And you're going to make sure that your show transform controls is checked on. This little checkbox, I know it's so tiny, but it's so important because if it's not on, then we can't make this any smaller or any bigger. We can just move it around. If it is checked on, that shows our little anchor points and that allows us to make it smaller or as big as we need it to be. So at this point, I have it all set up and I can click enter to get rid of that blue X. And I also see that me dropping that photo in created a new layer automatically. So as I mentioned in my other video, but if you skipped over that, that's fine. We have our layers down here. And I also like to have my color and my navigator open. My layers is really important for right now. So if there's too much stuff going on up here, I might move my color over to um, on the side or something like that because I need my layers to be visible for me for this project. It's really important. So my background layer is the white and I can click and drag that if I need to too. I don't want to move that white layer right now because I don't want to see that transparent background. So I'm just going to put that back and maybe I'll even lock it just to make sure that background layer does not move. I do need to add a third layer and this layer is going to go on top of my, my image. And I'm going to label that layer, click, double click, drawing. This is reminding me that this is the layer that I'm drawing on. I can't draw directly on my photograph and I can't draw directly on my background because I won't see it underneath my photograph. So I have to do it on my drawing layer. Now we're ready to draw. I'm going over to my brush and I'm going to check all of my brush settings. Let's see, do I need it this big? No, that's too big. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. It might depend on the size of your pixels from your photograph. It might be a little bit smaller or bigger. So just going to look at how big I think I want it to be. And I definitely need to change that color. I'll just keep it black for now so you can see my brush. I have my color that looks pretty good and then I also have um, my opacity for the image so I just want to mention this to you because this came up already in class if your photograph is really dark or if you want to draw with the same color as you have in the background here so like if I'm drawing blue on blue that's really hard for me to see I want to go in and change the opacity on this entire layer. So now it's a little bit lighter. I can still see where I'm trying to trace, but I can see my brush stroke better. So I have that opacity down. Okay, my next step, I'm just gonna get rid of that brush tool here. I did that out of order. So now I have to go back and change the opacity again. That's okay. 
I could have also erased, but it's easier to undo it, so I don't have to change tools too often. Okay, now I have my black brush. I'm just going to do it in black so you can see it, and I'm ready to trace. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to do all of my mountains. So I have my mountains here. All of these big shapes that I have. I'm doing it super quick. It's really messy. You guys are going to take your time, obviously. Kind of like really missing here. I like cut, cut that whole mountain out. I'm doing my whole contour line layer. And then I'm going to do the sand line. So let's just double check at this point and make sure that our drawing is not attached to our image. So perfect. Our drawing is separate than our image. Okay, our drawing, image. At this point, if you have all of the shapes that you need, you can turn your image layer off and you can just go in and you can fill it with those patterns that you guys chose already. You can fill all of your shapes. If you would like to choose the exact color of each mountain or whatever you have in your specific picture, you can take that eyedropper tool, hit it with the eyedropper tool, go back to your brush, and then it will be that exact color. See the color here. Again, I'll do that one more time. Eyedropper tool, grab the sky color, and now I can see the sky color. If you would like to start using the shortcut keys, on your keyboard. The I is the eyedropper. So you can see I'm doing it without going over. The I is the eyedropper. I'm going to click my um, pink color here. And then the B is the brush. And so I is the eyedropper and then B is the brush. And then I can go back to that brush and use the brush. You can't even see the pink. There we go. There's the pink. Okay. So we have all these crazy messy lines over here. I'm going to actually jump over to my example that I've been working on for a little while longer and show you a few more things. So I'm not going to waste your time in drawing in all of these things very closely. All right, let's zoom in. Let's see what we got going on here. So I have all these patterns. Each section is a different pattern. I have everything drawn in with the right color from the background. And you can choose different colors too. I just decided to keep it simple for my example and choose the right pinks that were in that photo. But you guys can change the colors. If you have mountains that are blue in the photo, you can make them green or purple, things like that. Um, I do have a quite a few layers here. Is there anything on this layer? I don't need that layer. Clean up my layers while I go. And I started to really get detailed and label all of my layers. This is a good habit to get into for when we have projects with even more layers. So let me just show you what I chose to separate. So as I was drawing, I started with I started with the contour drawing, which is those lines that I just drew really quick and messy for you. Those are the mountain lines here, the big ticket item lines that I need to separate my sky, my mountains, and my sand. On another layer, I did more contour. So I actually went back and saw where those details are. So I have the details for each of those layers of sand, kind of the, uh, the difference in colors. They're not super clear lines in the photograph, but I improvised a little bit, I added some lines in there, kind of made it my own because I wanted some more sections. And then um, I added the clouds actually a little bit differently than they were in the photograph. I just added some big sections of color there with the clouds and I added some separation to the mountains within the mountains. Now I have my patterns layer. So this is actually a completely separate layer Sorry, I don't know why I made the background blue. I'm just going to change that. It's actually good for you guys to see. If you want to change your background color, you can make it white or blue or whatever you want to make it. I'm going to go over my paint bucket 
make sure I'm on the right layer. I'm just going to go back to white. I don't know why I made it blue. It's probably just as an example. Um, so I can see my patterns here that I started to fill in and I haven't finished filling all of those in. After I did that, it looked like this. And I thought, no, I don't have enough color here. Even the ones where I did it really tiny, I think this is definitely a certain style, but I didn't like that color. So I wanted to put a mountain fill. Here's my mountain fill. This is a separate layer and I think it looks really awesome. And I will show you how I did the mountain fill and then I did the sand fill and the sky fill. So the mountain and the, you know, the sky and the sand, I believe are just rectangles that I overlapped. So if I had this mountain layer up top, it wouldn't work as, or on the bottom, it wouldn't work because it would be hiding it. So we just have to start worrying about the order of each layer. So I had my mountain layer on top of the sky and then I can see it and it's hidden. So I didn't have to fix this, this mountain line for the sky. It's just, a, it's just a rectangle. The mountains, however, is not just a rectangle. What I did was I put in that rectangle and then I just went in, I'm keeping it really simple for you guys. And I got my eraser and I can change the size of my eraser and I'm on that mountain fill layer and I went in and I erased in the shape of my mountains and that's all I did. I have it all the way across to even clean it up a little bit better here. Oops. In that shape of where my mountains ended. And now I have that whole fill in the background. Again, not necessary. I could have left it without that fill, but I think it gives it a better um, background here for my project. And now you can see that I don't have any of the original photo. My photo layer is off and I have a complete colored in and it will be completely drawn in with pattern project. So none of the photo is showing, the photo layer is on, photo layer can be deleted if you want it to be, but um, I keep it as a reference just for those colors. So when I go back into my clouds, which I will when I complete this, I'm going to grab that color, that exact cloud color, and then go back to my brush and start filling in, here, which layer do I want to fill it on? Patterns. So I label them and I can start filling in my patterns for my clouds. So I do need that reference photo to always be there so I can go back and steal colors from it. And then I'll just keep going until it's done. So when I'm done, you're going to click Command Shift 3 if you want to do a full screenshot. Can't do it right now because I'm on my laptop and the controls are different. But on your computers for the Macs in the classroom, it's Command Shift 3 for a full screen. And then it's Command Shift 4 for a partial screen. So you're going to do Command Shift 4, and then this little plus will pop up, and then you'll click and drag just the area of the screen that has your drawing, and that will be your screenshot. And then that will be what you submit for me to grade your project. And that's it. That's the whole project. So good luck, guys. I hope that you love your landscape projects, and they turn out really awesome, and I hope that you add a lot of creativity to it and you know, make it your own. Use your reference image as just that, a reference, but then go off and make it your own thing and your own piece. And I hope it turns out 